in the land of Ingri, where seven league boots and cloaks of invisibility really do exist, a tall black castle appeared one day on the hills above the town of Market Chipping. What made the castle all the more scary was that it moved, grinding slowly across the moorland, smoke pouring from its turrets in dirty grey gusts. It's her. She's back. After all this time. Everybody was sure that the castle belonged to the Witch of the Waste. Nobody had seen or heard of the witch for 50 years, but it was whispered that she had left the Wastes to terrorize the country once more. I heard she threatened the life of the king's daughter. That's why she sent Wizard Solomon after her. Got him killed. And then, word started to spread that the castle did not belong to the witch, but to Wizard Howl. And he was bad enough. Wizard Hal was known to amuse himself by collecting young girls' hearts and sucking out their souls. But weeks passed, May Day came, and although the castle still glowered from the hillside, merrymaking filled the streets. Young Sophie Hatter was hurrying on her way to work. Excuse me, sorry. Sophie worked in a ladies' hat shop, serving customers and trimming hats. Thank you. Come again. It was a lonely existence, and she had acquired the habit of telling each hat as she placed it on its stand what its next owner ought to be like. You, Pink Bonnet, have dimpled charm. You are as young as a spring leaf. You, Smart Hat, have mysterious allure. And you have a heart of gold. And someone in a high position will see it and fall in love with you. Sophie talked more and more to her hats as weeks went by. Until, as spring came on, business began to pick up. Indeed, such was the demand that Sophie worked by lamplight far into the night in order to have hats to sell the next day. This meant a lot of time for thinking, and Sophie felt more and more like all the lonely hours sewing and sitting was turning her into an old woman. Oh, stupid hats. What use are you all? You certainly aren't doing me a scrap of good. Sophie was within an ace of leaving the shop and setting out to seek her fortune when in sailed the grandest customer she had ever seen. Diamonds winking over her dense black dress. An ostrich plumed hat framed her carefully beautiful face. She seemed young, but... Miss Hatter. Yes? I hear you sell the most heavenly hats. Show me. Of course. Dimples. Youth. Mysterious allure. How very obvious. You're wasting my time, Miss Atta. This is only a small shop in a small town, madam. I wonder that you bothered to come in. Tell me, my dear. Have you ever heard of the Witch of the Waste? The Witch? Why, yes, everybody has. Indeed. And what exactly do you know about her? It said that... that... Yes? That the old king banished her to the Waste 50 years ago, and now she's back for revenge. They say she threatened the life of the new king's baby daughter, and that the king commanded his personal magician, Wizard Solomon, to go into the Waste and deal with her. And did he? No. He got himself killed. Quite. You see, I always bother when someone tries to set themselves against me. I've heard of you, Miss Hatter. You and your enchanting hats whose traits rub off on their wearers. They what? And I don't care for your competition or your attitude. In fact, I came to put a stop to you. No. There must be some mistake. No mistake, Miss Hatter. Oh. 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 
There. Oh, by the way, you won't be able to tell anyone you're under a spell, so you needn't try. <laughs> Sophie put her hands to her face and felt soft, leathery wrinkles. Oh, and my hands too. Oh, oh. Staring out from the mirror was the withered face of a gaunt old woman, surrounded by wispy white hair. Her own eyes gazed back at her, yellow and watery and tragic. Yet Sophie's thoughts about her situation were perfectly calm. Oh, don't worry, old thing. You look quite healthy. Besides, this is much more like the real you. Of course, you will have to do for the Witch of the Waste when you get a chance, but meanwhile, you can't stay here. Oh, somehow, I must get this spell undone. Sophie found a stick that suited her, carefully put up the closed sign on the shop door, and hobbled off over the bridge and into the countryside. Being a crone didn't stop her enjoying the sight and smell of May and the hedgerows, until the hedges gave way to moorland and the warm breeze to a chill wind. By now Sophie's knobbly old feet ached, and her back and her knees. And as night started to come down, all she desired in the whole world was a comfortable chair. What's that? Oh, I might have guessed. The castle. Dirty great thing. Mind you. All that smoke must be in a fireplace somewhere inside those walls. Ah. Sophie made for the castle. Well, why not? She doubted Wizard Howell would want her soul for his collection. He only took young girls. Besides, it occurred to her that if anyone knew how to undo enchantments, it was him. Stop! Oh, right then. Open up! Oh no, you don't! You can't get away from me that easily! As the castle started to rumble on, she hobbled up to the door and hit it violently with her stick. Open up! This battering had the desired effect, as the door creaked inwards and Sophie, hobbling furiously, managed to get one foot on its doorstep. Oh! Oh, what a ridiculous building. Then threw herself inside. Oh. 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 She found herself in a warm, lamplit room full of wizardly things, like leather books, crooked bottles, and a grinning human skull. On the other side was a fireplace with a small fire burning in the grate and placed beside it, in the warmest position, was a low chair with a cushion on it. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's better. My poor old bones. Sophie thought there must be salt in the wood to make the flames spit blue and green the way they did. Almost like a face. A thin blue face with a thin blue nose. <sighs> Suppose I stick around until Howl finds me. Wizards can lift spells. On the other hand, he might eat my heart. Don't you want your heart eaten? Ah! What are you? A fire demon. I'm bound to this heart by contract. But what are you? It's interesting you manage to demand yourself into the castle like that. Most curious. And I can see your under a spell. You see that? Can you take it off? Mm. It's a strong one. Feels like one of the Witch of the Wastes to me. It is. And of course you won't be able to tell anyone unless they know already. How about making a bargain with me? I'll break your spell if you break this contract I'm under. This contract of yours? It's with Wizard Howl, is it? Of course. I have to maintain the castle and keep it moving and do all the special effects that scare people off, as well as anything else Howl might want. He's quite heartless, you know. All right. 
How do I break it? You agree to a bargain? If you agree to break the spell on me. Done. I'll break your spell the very instant you break my contract. Then tell me how. I can't. Part of the contract is that neither Wizard Howl nor I can say what the main clause is. Then you can sit in that fireplace until doomsday. <laughs> Don't be hasty. You can find out what it is if you watch and listen carefully. But if I'm to watch and listen, I'll have to stay in the castle. What possible excuse can I give? We'll think of one. Oh, I ache all over. Oh, what I won't do to that witch. We've moved. Wherever are we? Oh, dear. Four doors. I wonder what's through this one. Ugh, bathroom. It's filthy. Stairs. Rickety. Broom cupboard. Oh, this place is a dump. Howl obviously doesn't care what squalor his servants live in. Good morning to you, too. Oh. Who are you? Well, I could ask you the same question, young man. She's not the Witch of the Waste, is she? I wouldn't have let her in if she was. Where is Wizard Howl? Um, I'm afraid Howl's not here at the moment. Can I help you instead? I'm Howl's apprentice, Michael. No, I'm afraid only the wizard can help me. I'll wait, if you don't mind. Tell him the name's Sophie. Old Sophie. Oh. Would you like some breakfast? Yes, I'm ravenous. I'm afraid there's only bread and cheese. But there's a whole basket of eggs right there. And isn't that bacon? How's the only one who can cook? Unhook that frying pan and I'll show you. No, no, you don't understand. It's Calcifer, the fire demon. He won't bend down his head to be cooked on for anyone but Howl. I refuse to be exploited. Now, Calcifer, let's have no more nonsense. Bend down your head. You can't make me. Oh, yes, I can. If you don't, I shall pour water on you. Or I could tell Howl about our bargain. Oh, curses. <laughs> I hope your bacon burns. Don't be silly. And hold still, I want to break the eggs in. Oh, hello, Hal. Sophie turned and saw a tall young fellow in the doorway carrying a guitar. Oh. And yet, the strangest thing was, she'd seen him before. Oh, your wizard, Hal. It had been on May Day, in fact on her way to Market Square. Crowds of young men had swaggered to and fro, calling vulgar remarks and accosting girls, and the girls had strolled in fine pairs, ready to be accosted. But then a young man with glass-green eyes, the same guitar, and a fantastical blue and silver costume had decided to accost her. Oh, it's all right, you little grey mouse. I only want to buy you a Mayday drink. No. No, thank you, sir. I... Goodbye. <laughs> right you are. Who am I to keep a pretty young lady? Where have I seen you before? I'm a total stranger. She says her name's Sophie. She came last night, apparently. How did she make Calcifer bend down? <laughs> she bullied me. Not many people can do that. Pass me two more slices of bacon and six eggs and tell me why you're I'm here. I'm here, young man, because I am your new cleaning lady. Are you indeed? And I can clean this castle of all but your wickedness. How's not wicked? Oh, yes, I am. I'm a notorious lady killer. He checked himself in the mirror as he said this, which made Sophie shudder. If you're so anxious to be of use, my good woman... Find some knives and forks and clear the table. If I'm going to be cooking and cleaning here, I'd like to know where the rest of the castle is. <laughs> <laughs> Tell her. 
<laughs> It'll stop a pestering. There isn't any, except the two bedrooms upstairs. What? Howl and Calcifer invented the castle, and Calcifer keeps it going. But the inside's really just Howl's old house in Port Haven. But Port Haven's miles away. What do you mean by having this great ugly castle rushing about the hills and frightening everyone in market chipping to death? What an outspoken old woman you are. I've reached that stage in my career when I need to impress everyone with my power and wickedness. I can't have the king thinking well of me. Also, last year I offended someone very powerful and I need to keep out of their way. It seemed a funny way to avoid someone, but Sophie supposed wizards had different methods from ordinary people. Mm. Oh, king's redor. Ugh. Sophie noticed a square wooden knob above the door, a dab of paint on each of its four sides. Hull turned the knob round so that it had a red blob downwards, then opened the door to reveal a fine, upstanding civil servant on his doorstep. Good morning. His Majesty the King presents his compliments and sends payment for 2,000 pairs of seven-league boots. Thank you. And as to the other matter discussed at your last meeting, the king... Oh, uh, no time. Very busy. Goodbye. Whew. That was close. Hot water in the bathroom, please, Calcifer. I have a sudden urge to tint my hair. Oh, yes. <laughs> The only thing to do, Sophie decided, was to show Hull she was an excellent cleaning lady. In the days that followed, and telling herself she was looking for clues, Sophie scoured her way through the castle. Sooner or later, she was certain to come across something that explained Calcifer's contract. Oh, Sophie! Mothers, lock up your daughters, for Wizard Hull is on the prowl. I'm off. Keep an eye on Sophie Calcifer and don't wait up. If the red blob leads to Kingsbury, the blue to Port Haven and the green wherever the castle goes, where does the black blob take you? What a nosy old woman you are. That leads to my private bolt hole and you are not going to be told where it is. Off to hunt young girls again, no doubt. That's right. It gradually became clear to Sophie that Calcifer did all the strong magic in the castle and Michael did all the hack work, such as making spells and potions for their wide array of customers. Hal, meanwhile, gadded around catching girls and exploiting the other two. Oh, where's Hal got to? I need his help with these seven league boots. Oh, and heartless Howl is finding his latest victim rather tough. And here I was hoping he was almost sensible again. Really? How can you both talk like that about such utter wickedness? At least I can't blame Calcifer, since he's an evil demon. But you, Michael... If you knew the trouble we've had because of Hal's romancing, we, we've had lawsuits and suitors with swords and mothers with rolling pins and fathers and uncles with cudgels. And aunts. Oh, aunts are terrible. They go for you with hat pins. But the worst is when the girl herself finds out where Hal lives and turns up at the door. I hate the unhappy ones. Oh. They drip on me. Now let me get this straight. Just what does Howl do to these poor females? I was told he took their souls away. Ah, then you must come from market chipping. Hal sent me down there to blacken his name when we first set up the castle. That was the sort of thing I said. Howl's very fickle. He's only interested until the girl falls in love with him. Then he can't be bothered. Well, I still say it's wicked. Going round making poor girls unhappy. It's heartless. Precisely. Evening. Evening. What are you three talking about? Oh, nothing. Listen that. Hmm. Well, if you're going to be sewing and gossiping by that fire all day, I have a silk suit with a hole in it that needs mending.
So isn't he ever in love with any of them? No, not really. The day Hal forgets to preen himself will be the day I believe he's really in love. And not before. Sophie cleaned the bathroom next. It was a project that took days because Hull spent so long in it before going out. Oh, now we'll see about that contract. But all she found were creams and powders and paint. I've never known such a peacock. Halcibar, you'll really have to give me a hint at least. I have given you a hint. Then you'll have to give it to me again. If I tell you it's a hint, it won't be one anymore. But how can I get the terms out of Howell if he's never in? Right then, Michael. When Howell was in, which was perhaps more often than Sophie gave him credit for, he eventually got round to teaching Michael to enchant his first pair of seven league boots. Now, be careful. It's amazing the way one can take a step ten and a half miles long and still always land in a cow band. To Sophie, they looked like big leather buckets, but knowing how to make a decent pair of seven leaguers was an important step on Michael's way to becoming a wizard himself. I'm ready. Then, go. <laughs> Congratulations, my boy. You're officially a seven-league bootmaker. <laughs> now, put on your best plum velvet suit and take the spell to the palace. Tell them a child could work it, let alone 2,000 men. A child, right. And don't forget to blacken my name to the king. I'll try. Blacken it, Michael. You know what's at stake. Oh, my feet itch. I think I'll go for a walk on the hills. Goodbye. And we all know what that means. It was then that a most peculiar sound came from the door. What is it? Something outside. She reached out to twist the knob black blot down, but somehow it already was. That's strange. What can you see? There's nothing. Just utterly and completely nothing. Sophie didn't dare mention opening the door or the strange knocks to Hal, and the weeks passed without any further discoveries. The wizard was absent more than ever. Hot water in the bathroom, Calcifer? Sophie, have you tidied this shelf of spells in here? I haven't touched a thing. I hope you didn't. I think he's tinting his hair again. I hope you left the hair spells alone. Oh, shush. I put everything back. Look at this! Look at it! What has that one woman force of chaos done to these spells? If you mean me... I do mean you! Look! My hair is ruined! I think it's very nice. Nice? You would. Look at it. It's ginger. I, I shall have to hide until it's all grown out. Despair! Anguish! Horror! Oh, what are you doing? Oh, stop! Oh. Suddenly, dramatically, and disgustingly, thick green slime began pouring from her. No! How? No! Oh, oh, oh my word! Stop it! Oh, this is no way to express your feelings. There were horrendous quantities of it. Oodles. It draped his head and shoulders in sticky dollops, heaping on his knees and trickling in glops down his legs. Oh, oh that's revolting! Oh. oh, don't let it touch you. Oh, oh, smell, fire. I'll open the windows. 
Save me! This step is going to put me out! How? Stop it! Stop it at once! You're behaving like a baby! What should we do? Get him in the bathroom. Push him under the shower and wash it off. Hot water, Casper. Very hot. Come on. We have to sweep all this onto the moors. Oh. Oh, I wish all this slime would just go away. Oh. Did you do that? I don't know. It must have done itself. Surely. Uh... He stopped sliming, but I can't get him to speak. Oh, it's just a tantrum. Now, what was all this fuss about? It can't really be about your hair. My hair's half my charm. More than half, really. He sounded so miserable, Sophie felt almost sorry for him. I mean, how am I, how am I going to make the girls fall in love with me looking like this? Sophie's sympathy shrank quite sharply. Why not feed them love potions if it matters that much? Oh no, that would spoil all the fun. Don't you ever give a thought to any of them? All the time. Then why do it? The truth is, I brought it upon myself making a certain bargain some years ago. I can never love anyone properly now. But for some silly reason, I keep trying. You are wicked. Dear Sophie, if I wanted someone to really blacken my name to the king, I wouldn't need to look further than you, would I? The king had other problems. Prince Justin, who had been great friends with the poor wizard Suleiman, held the opinion that his brother the king shouldn't have sent Suleiman after the Witch of the Waste in the first place. So, rather unwisely in my view, he had ridden off to find him and, like Suleiman, had never come back. The days passed. Rumour of Justin's absence spread and once again it fell upon the Chancellor's clerk to descend on the moving castle's Kingsbury entrance. Yes? A missive from the King, Master Fisher. And this time I strongly suggest Howl takes it. Well, it's finally happened. Behold the new royal wizard. With the royal command to find Prince Justin, alive or dead, before the year is out. I'm sorry, Howl. I, I didn't blacken your name enough. No, oh, it's not your fault. The king thinks the witch took wizard Suleiman as bait to lure Justin. And now he wants me to get him back. With a strong hint that destroying the witch could come in handy too. Why did you want to slither out of looking for the prince? Don't you think you can find him? Rude as well as a bully, aren't you? I wanted to get out of it because I know I can find him. The fact is, there's a certain lady in the waste who promised to fry me alive last year. And I've only avoided her so far because I had the sense to give her a false name. You mean you jilted the witch of the waste? And I thought I was fond of her at the time. Oh, typical. Michael, looks like we'll need that new spell sooner than expected. How's it coming? Uh, not great, I'm afraid. So, you've been looking for Justin already. Oh, how your ears flap and your long nose twitches. Yes, and Suleiman too when he disappeared. Courting isn't the only thing I do when I go out. Oh. Right, Michael, what's the problem? The problem? The spell's impossible. See? I know it won't work until we learn the hidden claws, but I don't know how to catch a falling star, and... Yes, see, Maur... Michael, I'm not being funny, but where did you find this? In that heap of things Sophie piled up. It was the only new spell there, and I thought, you know... I might have known. Uh, Sophie, dear, 
What? Am I right in thinking that you turned my doorknob black side down and stuck your long nose out through it? Just the end of my stick. But you opened the door. And this thing Michael thinks is a spell must have got through. How? Not sure. We'll stick a pin in that. What is it then? <sighs> Go and catch a falling star. Get with child a mandrake root. Tell me where all past years are or who cleft the devil's foot. It sounds very nice. It should. It's a poem by a fellow called John Dunn. And not the spell we all need. And the book it came from isn't here. I'd better go back for it. Back where? Hal went to the door and turned the knob black down. And then he noticed Michael and Sophie staring. Oh, all right. I know Sophie will only squirm through if I leave her behind, and that's not fair to Michael. Come along, both of you. Well, wait for me. Have a heart and tell me what's out there. I will! That was another hint, by the way. The nothingness was only inch thick, after all. Beyond it, in a grey, drizzling evening, was a cement path leading to a garden gate. Beyond that was a flat, hard-looking road lined with houses. The castle had become a house, just like the others, square and new, with a front door of wibbly glass. I knew you came from foreign parts, but this is like another world. When you've quite finished nosing, we need to be dressed in keeping with this place. Hold still. Ow! I can hardly bend my knees. What is this stuff? Denim. You'll get used to it. Come on, Sophie. To Sophie's surprise, the back of Hull's baggy jacket, which is what his scarlet and grey finery had changed into, had two mysterious words on it. Welsh rugby. This way. Wipe your feet. Hello. Hello. Indrwyn Gatrev. Chyn iawn i. Limod y fam. Mum's not in yet. What a pity. By the way, this is Michael and Sophie. Hello. Hello. Hi. Listen, kid. You haven't by any chance lost a piece Uncle of... Uncle Howell, I'm in the middle of a game. Well, there's a welcome for you. I'm here for my books. Good luck. Mum sold them all. What do you mean, she sold them all? Oh, I need one of them, particularly. Is my old car still in the shed? Or have they sold that too? You've got the only set of keys. Uncle Howell! I'll plug it back in when you've told me what this is. Hey, that's my English homework. Where did you find it? At my place. Seems there's been a mix-up. Wait, was that funny writing that turned up yours? Yes. Where is it? Miss Angorian said it was interesting, lucky for me, and she took it home with her. You mean your teacher's got it? Yeah. She's new. And very fierce. Where does she live? Ooh. This is the place. Number 27. Come on. Come along, Sophie. Mrs. Angorian didn't look like a fierce schoolteacher. The only thing that suggested fierceness was the direct and clever way her dark eyes seemed to sum up her visitors. I'll take a small guess that you may be Howell Jenkins. And you must be Miss Angorian. Sorry to bother you, but I carried off my nephew's English homework last week instead of a rather important paper. I gather Neil gave it to you as proof he wasn't shirking. <laughs> You'd better come in. Won't you sit down? Thank you. How did you know who I am? You've caused a lot of gossip in this town. No. And what have people told you? That you disappear and turn up rather unpredictably. Ooh. And what else? Many other things. Few of them to your credit. 
Here's the verse your nephew gave me. Would you mind telling me what it is? You tell her, Michael. It's the spell. Oh, thank goodness. That's what I thought. Miss Angorian, if you've heard all those things about me, then you'll know I wrote my doctoral thesis on charms and spells with my hand on my heart. It's for study purposes only. <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. Jenkins. I wasn't exactly expecting you to be working on anything sinister with it. It just didn't seem wise to be leaving so valuable a document in the care of one of my pupils. Fascinating subject, though, if you're into demonology. Don't tell me you can read this stuff. It's old Welsh. Better than you, I think. You mistranslated a vital line, by the way. But I corrected it for you. Oh, thank you. Miss Angorian, would you consider coming out for supper with me tonight? Certainly not. Why did you leave this place for Ingury? Didn't you like it here? Oh, I love Wales. But it doesn't love me. Fascinating woman, that Miss Angorian. I should like to know her better. Michael, guard that spell with your life. Yes, Hal. What is it, anyway? It's an incantation to forcibly terminate the contract between magical practitioners and fire demons, if you must know. Oh. Could I have a look? No. You most certainly cannot. Michael, don't let her near it. Right, Michael, to work. Yes. What exactly are you going to do? Yes, Hal, do tell. Years ago, the witch made a contract with a fire demon to increase her magic power. And if we're going to save Justin from her clutches, we need to break it. And that spell can, can it? Yes, but there are dozens of ways to bind the demon. For the spell to work, we need to know the method she used. Exactly. It could have been anything from trapping it in a magic lamp to learning its true name. But even if you did know, she'd never let you close enough to cast the spell. Not since... <laughs> you know. Leave that to me. My big fear is she'll find out what we're up to before I'm ready. What's happening? Calcifer? Brace yourself. She's found me. The Port Haven door opened from Hal's old house on the seafront. The street was full of people looking upwards as a huge black cloud boiled and twisted above the chimney tops. Here she comes. You didn't think I know about Wales, Hal, or your appointment by the king. What do we do? You two stay here. But... But nothing. Leave this to me. Hal shot up into the cloud in a blurred flash of trailing sleeves. The cloud spun in on itself ferociously, and from the inside came a multitude of violent bangs and flashes. But then the swirling clot of magic took on the shape of a misty bundle of fighting snakes, hissing and snapping at each other. What's going on? Illusions. They're both trying to fool one another into fighting the wrong thing. The clot tore in two. One half sped yowling across the roofs and out to sea, and the second went screaming after it. Which is who? No idea. They watched the dark patch of raging storm fling up great white-topped waves, which swept in and lashed the quayside. Look! Michael pointed as a ball of pale fire rolled lazily up in the distance. The bang that went with it only reached the watchers when the fireball had become a spreading tower of smoke. How? I can't see him. They... they must have done for one another. No! No! Keep looking! Oh, what are we going to do without him? I don't believe it. He oh. just can't be... Oh! How? Oh. <clears throat> what are you two looking at? How? Oh. You're alive! Of course I'm alive. Stop dawdling and get the door open. I'm exhausted. Don't come near me like that. You're wet. Sophie, 
For pity's sake, find the bottle of brandy in the closet, unless you've drunk it or turned it into turpentine. Oh. Gulliver, down the hatch. Oh, 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 that's better. Didn't you kill the witch? No. She relies mostly on a fire demon and stays behind out of trouble. Her demon's very old and knows things I've never dreamed of. <coughs> That's it. I'm going to bed. Where I may die. Michael, attend me. All right. Come on then, out. This way. He's scared. I'm scared. If you don't break our contract before she does, I won't be able to help you at all. Sophie knew now that there was little hope of fulfilling her bargain. When Hal wasn't locked away studying his book, he was spending an awful lot of time back in Wales. Aha, my dicterum vanui. And then we the guide on Miss Angorian was the latest object of his affections, and to even Michael and Calcifer's surprise, the relationship was looking serious. I'm off. Don't wait up. Atheridiaitirion, om vanui, eburidourdvengueledi. And then, one Thursday morning, the unthinkable happened. The front door opened, and Miss Angorian peered in. Oh, oh, I beg your pardon? Miss Angorian, what the... Well, how did you... I told her changing the doors would muck up our defences. I thought Howell might be here. I don't understand the outside, and then this... This is a castle. This is Howell's castle. You've no right walking into people's castles like this. I must be going mad. Oh, hello, Miss Angorian. Hal's busy at the moment, but I can fetch him. So you all live here, in the castle? Look, why don't you go and explore outside for a minute? Uh, oh, uh, all right. I suppose it's rather stuffy in here with that funny green fire burning. Funny green fire? It talks! Go on then, out you go. Just don't go towards the southeast. There's a witch that way. Okay. I've never seen anyone got rid of so fast. You're a natural. Shut up. What's she doing here? She came to see Howl. But please don't tell him. Howl has a habit of noticing attractive women, whether you tell him or not. What was that? It's the witch! Michael Fisher, tell your master I now have the woman called Lily Angorian in my fortress in the Waste. What? Oh no! Tell him I will only let her go if he comes himself to fetch her. Is that clear? I'll get how. Oh, I should have kept her indoors. Howl's forgiven me a lot of things, but he won't forget this in a hurry. What are you doing? Going after her! How? See what these seven league boots can do. Southeast is that way, and three steps to the waist should do it. One. Oh, right then. Uh, two. Oh. Three. The country whipped by once more and she found herself standing in the waist. Oh! Oh, it's like an oven! Ah. Oh. Ahead, she saw a fantastical stack of little twisted towers, as if something had fused together thousands of chimney pots into a tapering heap, rising to a point like a gnarled and knotty finger. Now that has to be the witch's fortress. With only her trusty stick for company, she entered through a misshapen dark archway into a murky light of greenish flames that flickered but gave no heat. Why, Miss Hatter? 
I never forget a face. Especially when I've made it myself. Give me Miss Angorion. No. We will wait until Howl comes. He won't. He's got more sense. My dear sweet girl. How blind you are. And how crowded my dungeons are becoming. <sighs> Howl will come. But it's been so much trouble. Threatening the king's daughter to ensnare wizard Solomon. Using Solomon to capture the prince. All designed to make Howl follow. But he didn't, did he? No. It turned out there was only one way to lure him. Well, how? By taking the woman he loves. The perfect revenge for toying with my affection. Where is Miss Angorian? <laughs> uh, wouldn't you like to know? He's coming. At last. Sophie? Oh. Welcome, wizard. I always knew I'd get you in the end. Don't gloat too soon. I'd have never got through your defenses unless you thought you were drawing me into a trap. Now let her go. You can't defend. Feet me and you know it. <sighs> All that trouble to find the secret of my contract. And what good has it done? <clears throat> my fire demon and I have out schemed you. Where is it? Speeding its way to your castle. Soon your demon will be dead. And your heart and all its magic will be. <coughs> oh, Octavia. Look at you. Your heart's almost used up, isn't it? You may not have noticed, but I fear your demon has. <coughs> what do you mean? I fear it's out-schemed both of us. What? It's been keeping you alive, hasn't it? And now, I think it wanted me to kill you. No. You lie. What say you, Howl? Time for one last battle. Octavia, please. Don't try. You haven't the strength anymore. <laughs> Octavia! What kind of contract did you make with it? Tell me! Quickly! Oh, I, don't, I don't understand. Panthama would never betray me. I'm sorry. It already has. No. No. Panthama! It's a foolish thing to entrust your heart to a fire demon. Sad, really. She wasn't always evil. As Sophie had feared, Howl hadn't bothered to shave or tidy his hair. His eyes were red-rimmed and his silk sleeves torn. Oh dear, she thought. He must love Miss Angorian very much. Come on. We have to get back before the fire demon finds a way of getting inside my defenses. What about Wizard Solomon and Prince Justin? They can wait a couple more hours to be rescued. Now, where are those seven league boots? But Miss Angorian... Don't you understand? Miss Angorian is the fire demon. If it gets inside the castle again, then Calcifer's had it and so have I. What? Forget the boots. I'll have to raise the wind. Hold on tight. Oh! I thought you were in love with Miss Angorian. Of course not. I always knew what she was. But now I think it knew I knew all along. So you were always going to rescue the prince? Yes! But then you had to go and play into the witch and her demon's hands. Me? Yes. You're too nice. I was relying on you being too jealous to let Miss Angorian anywhere near the place. 
Howl! Miss Angorian stood by the fire, clutching what looked like a blazing lump of coal. Calcifer. Your witch is dead. Yes. She was getting far too old. Your heart, however, has many years left. You, brother demon, shall surrender it. No. I only have to tighten my grip. Her hand that was holding Calcifer squeezed until its knuckles showed pale yellow. No. Calcifer writhed in agony and Howl crashed to the floor. Sophie, enchant your stick. My stick? Yes, like you did the green slime at the castle when you first came. Sophie wondered if she could. After all, the slime had gone when she'd told it to, and the castle had stopped. And she had charmed all those hats in the hat shop. Stick, beat Miss Angorian, but don't hurt anyone else. <laughs> Do you really think your feeble match Miss Angorian dropped Calcifer, who flamed sideways across the flagstones. Sophie picked him up and felt the dark lump of Howl's heart beating between her fingers. You gave it to me as part of our contract to keep me alive. Get this! This thing! Calcifer, Calcifer, if I break your contract, will it kill you? It would if anyone else did. That's why I asked you. I can tell you can talk life into things. Then give up House Heart and have another thousand years. She felt Calcifer fizz with new life and nipped him off the black lump. <laughs> Then he whirled up the chimney and out of sight. Sophie, I think Howl's dying. Howl? Well, here goes. Go in, Hart. Get in there and work. She put the black lump on Howl's chest and pushed. And pushed. Come on, Howl. Oh. Wake up. Oh. Please. Please, Howl, live. You must live. Howl's teeth! What a hangover! <laughs> Miss Angorian. At the sound of Howl's voice, the stick ceased its attack. I know the spell to break your contract. Impossible. For that, you'd need to know my true name, and you'll never find that out. But I already have. Panthema. <laughs> By the name Panthema, I break the pact and claim the hostage bond. <sighs> Howl held out one hand, spoke a sentence lost in claps of thunder and then stepped back with a small, hard black thing in his hand. My heart! G give it back! I'm afraid not. You've had your time. He held the witch's old heart between both palms and pushed his hands together. No! Wow. So, she's finally gone? Yes. To Michael's amazement, but not to Hal's, it seemed, a young woman stood where old Sophie had been. Sophie? Is this you? Of course. Grey really doesn't <laughs> suit you. I thought that when I first saw you. Where's Calcifer? Gone. I had to break your contract. We were hoping you would. Neither of us wanted to end up like the witch and Miss Angorian. I've been wondering all along if you'd turn out to be that girl I met on May Day. And now that you know for sure? I think. Yes. 
We ought to live happily ever after. <laughs> Living happily ever after with you would be a good deal more eventful than any story made it sound. Kalsif is back! And you'll probably be off half the time rescuing people. Nah. I only did that for the money. Liar. I said that Kalsif has come back! They looked at the grate, where, sure enough, the familiar blue face was flickering among the logs. You didn't need to do that, old friend. I don't mind, as long as I can come and go. Besides, it's raining out there in the market jibbing. Hull's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne-Jones was adapted by Robert Valentine. Sophie was played by Julia McKenzie and Dakota Blue Richards. Hull by Iwan Rion. Michael by Angus Imry. Calcifer by Dan Starkey. The Witch of the Waste by Pippa Bennett Warner. Neil by Geron Howell. And Miss Angorian by Gwyneth Keyworth. The narrator was Robert Bathurst. The music was composed and performed by Evelyn Sykes. Sound design was by Richard Fox. The director was Simon Barnard. Hull's Moving Castle was a Battlegab production for B.